Hey guys, it's Ross and this is how the 2019 Red Bull Megaloop went for me. So coming into the 2019 Red Bull Megaloop, um, everything was obviously rushed as we only get a 48 hour notice period until we have to come to the competition. So I really was stressed, I'll be honest. Luckily being on such short notice, uh, coming from South Africa, Red Bull organized me a pretty sick lift from the airport. Yeah, big thanks to Red Bull for all the help for being there. And uh, my ride from the airport to the comp was pretty cool. Got to drive the Red Bull van. <laughs> that was really, really awesome. That thing's so sick. And uh, Red Bull never disappoints. They're always on top form. It, it went well for me. <laughs> I don't think it could have gone any better. Um, I had a very stressful first heat as the wind was very gusty, a little bit offshore, and it was just conditions I wasn't used to. And um, I was very disappointed in the way I rode, but um, I, I believe if I didn't have that first heat, I wouldn't have won the competition. Um, I really think that put my head in the right place and it made me realize that I need to focus. Yeah, uh, my first heat wasn't the greatest. Uh, it was probably one of the worst heats I have had in my professional career. But um, yeah, I mean, it was tough, but at the same time, I, I believe if I didn't have that first heat, I really wouldn't have gone as far as I did in the competition because that first heat made me realize that I need to focus more and I really need to be just adapt to the conditions as I've never kited conditions like that before so it was it was tough but at the same time I think it was really good for me and um, yeah I'm quite grateful that it went that way yeah so my family played a massive role in this competition between every single heat I was actually calling my dad he was actually listening to the commentators and listening to Lewis um, what he was saying and what they were suggesting watching from the commentary and I was actually listening to that and putting that into my riding and it really, I must say, that made a big difference. Um, he kept on just saying, okay, one more heat, let's just push through one more heat and once we got through that heat, we were like, okay, well, now we're in the quarterfinals, let's just try it, come, let's just get in the semifinals and that'll be awesome, that'll be amazing if we can do it and we got to the semis and we both kind of said, well, flip, we can do this. Um, called him after the heat and said um, so what do you think I'm in the finals um, and he didn't know what I was talking about because uh, he obviously didn't watch it so um, yeah I think that was pretty cool uh, to get him on surprise like that but uh, yeah it was exciting times and I mean the first person I called was my dad after the finals the first thing he said to me was like yeah you're my son <laughs> so that was pretty cool and then I called my mom as well and she was all emotional and I called the rest of my family and I mean I think it just means so much to all of us. Um, like coming from where we started to where we are now, it's it's a big improvement, and I'm super grateful to have all of them behind me. Other competitors that I was looking out for in the competition, um, coming into it, I knew Kevin Langry is going to be a, a hard guy to compete against because he um, he's won King of the Air three times now. He's been in pretty much every single final. Uh, with the competitions that he's competed in and um, I knew he was going to be a tough one. Um, previous winners, Josh Emanuel and Lassa Walker. I was very worried about being in a heat with them. Um, Lassa has beat me before and so has Josh. On the day, any of the 16 riders can actually take the win. Yeah, I believe I was very stressed for some of the big names in the comp. Um, and just on a side note, a massive thanks must be given to Josh Emanuel. Um, I mean, I was in a heat with Josh and Ozzy, and I mean, it's, it was tough because um, obviously we're all South African. One of us had to go out. Unfortunately, Josh got knocked out. And I mean, he could have quite easily gone and just sat in the riders' room and done nothing and um, just watched the rest of the comp. But Josh chose to come out of his own and just be there for me for the rest and motivate me and really push me. And Josh was running up and down on the beach screaming and just really he helped me so much in those last few heats and that really made me realize what a awesome person Josh is and to have that advice that Josh was giving me and it really it helped me so much and I can't thank him enough for that and 
Lou has been a guy that I've looked up to ever since I started kiting and he's, he just motivates me so much and the guy I look up to the most say things like he does and it's just really, it's Lewis is one of the nicest guys I know and he's one of the most talented big air riders in the world. He's an amazing guy. To have Lou support me the way he did in this Mega Loop Challenge, it gave me so much motivation to try come on top and when, um, when they announced I won, uh, and I saw Lewis come running and he, he gave me a big hug and that um, that for me was so emotional and it just it meant so much to me and um, yeah he just he put his head by my ear and he just said just enjoy it and um, really I <laughs> I enjoyed that moment and I was just looking around and taking everything in and um, oh, it was it was amazing it's uh, I'm just so honored to be in the competition never mind come on the top step he too I was nervous. Um, being in round two, this is make it or break it. You've got to come top two to make it through. Um, going off how my first heat went, I was really worried. I didn't know what was going to happen. I, my second heat of the day till my last heat of the day, I won every single heat. Yeah, going into the semis, it was it was awesome because it was the first time I've been in the semifinals and it was the reality kicked in that if I did well in the semis I could actually be in the finals uh, that really that was hard because I was I got nervous because then I realized hang on we can just make the finals and uh, yeah semis went really well I came out with a win which again boosted my confidence yeah going into the finals I have never been so nervous in my life I can say that for sure and I heard the organizers come call us and tell us we got 15 minutes till we're on and uh, that's when it kicked in and I just had to get my head in the right place. Funny thing is in the finals I wasn't even listening to music. <laughs> I just put my headphones in just to kind of block everything out and focus on what I was going to do and I started visualizing my heat and if things went right how to react and if things went wrong how to react and um, as the, the green flag came up and the heat started I went out and this perfect wave popped up not within 10 seconds of the heat I hit it and did one of the biggest loops I did on the day and that loop ended up winning the competition for me um, I led from my first trick till my last trick and um, yeah coming coming off the water I didn't actually know how I did I really I saw the other riders going so big and I just thought yo it's it's close um if anything I just wanted a third place that's all I really wanted I just wanted to be on the podium just experience it get the feeling so I, I was very relaxed in the finals actually I was just having a lot of fun enjoying myself enjoying the crowd and it's not often we get to kite in front of that many people so I just I was having fun enjoying it and Coming off the water, first person that came up to me was um, my photographer, he was also my caddy on the day and um, yeah we kind of just looked at each other and I said to him also what do you think and he was like you know what I think you, you've you got a shot at this and then I saw the photographers and all the media coming over and I was thinking oh, okay well I've made the podium here yeah, this is pretty cool and um, yeah when they told me I won I just um, I couldn't believe it I was so lost for words and the emotions are running high, I can say that for sure. I've got to say, apart from being told that I won, um, it was probably when Lewis came up to me um, during my interview and he just gave me a hug and that, that was special. Just um, seeing how much it meant to him as well, really, really felt nice. That was a special moment for sure. Probably the highlight of my competition for sure. The crowd was awesome. Um, there's there's nothing quite like being upside down in a mega loop and hearing the crowd scream. It's just a it's a cool feeling. It really it felt good and um, yeah, it's it's so much fun competing in front of a crowd. It just it makes you want to go one step further and um, push your boundaries a bit, and it's it's fun. This event was organised extremely well and. Uh, Everything just went perfect. The they looked after the riders well. They um, the heats were on time. The flags were on time. They were syncing with my watch fine. Um, they had good judges. The live stream was awesome. Just um, and if it wasn't for Red Bull, these events wouldn't be possible.
So, um, yeah, just a massive thanks to, to Red Bull for everything they're doing and helping us pushing the sport and um, by far one of the most awesome brands out there. Yeah, the watch. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously only having such a short amount of time to get to South Africa, I forgot my watch at home. Um, luckily, my photographer, uh, Bo van Weyck, had a watch and um, I used it. But his daughter actually was the only one who knew how to set it up. So she set the watch up for me. And our heats were 12 minutes long. Um, and she set the watch up for 12 uh, hours. So um, my first two heats were the most confusing heats of my life. I couldn't figure out why the watch wasn't working and why the time was so weird. And halfway through my one heat, I clicked and I couldn't help but laugh. And uh, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, then once you figured it out, I took it back to her and she set it to 12 minutes and it worked perfect. So yeah, big thanks to her for fixing everything and it went well. <laughs> yeah, and um, just a massive thanks to Bo and his wife, uh, Jasmina, for all the help. Um, I came to the day with, I thought I had a caddy and unfortunately last minute he had to pull out due to some reasons and um, I didn't have a caddy. So I gave Bo a, a shout and... Uh, Asked him if he could help me out, and um, luckily he did. Music that I was listening to before my heats, probably not the same things that the other riders would be listening to. I was listening to some super chilled stuff, and um, yeah, some old school music, some new Miley Cyrus stuff, just, <laughs> just something different, but I mean, uh, yeah, it worked. Um, I rode straps in the Mega Loop Challenge. Um, the reason behind it is purely because of how intense that competition is. <clears throat> it's shallow waters, it's strong wind, it's choppy wind, and um, I just feel I have more confidence in straps for an event like that, and um, I mean, I have nothing against boots, I ride boots probably 50% of the time in Cape Town. Um, but I just chose straps again for this competition and it, it seemed to have worked in my favor. It was pretty cool. So. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, we wanted to do something different. Um, I mean, nothing's ever normal with Bo. <laughs> we always got to go out of our way and be in some river with, I don't know, there could be crocodiles under here or some, we, we saw some really big beavers and, Probably a snake as well, but I mean, uh, yeah, we're on a river, we're drifting, it's pretty cool. Um, we've got a lot of expensive equipment on the SUPs as well, <laughs> so I'm a bit nervous, but uh, yeah, so the day after, well, the after the competition, we drove back to Germany, um, and Bo decided to take me for a SUP the next day, but he didn't tell me that the SUP was going to take two and a half, three hours long. He told me it was a nice quick sup, um, so that was long and tiring. But I mean, uh, yeah, it's been cool, but I am tired. <laughs> I'm ready to go home. <laughs> cool, and what's next for Ross? Um, King of the Air, that's gonna be another big one. Um, I'm working hard. Winning this competition's helped me see what you need to do and how hard you actually need to work, so. I'm gonna put in a lot of effort for the King of the Air and work on some things and uh, yeah, I am excited to see what the future has to hold. Mm -hmm.